All right, scavengers, welcome to episode 25 of the Six Scale Scavengers podcast. I'm Brian Fontaine, joined as always with my good friend, Chris Letty. And Chris, this isn't actually the one year anniversary of the podcast, but it's the month of July. We launched the podcast last July, 2018, and what better time with episode 25 to uh, kind of officially kick off the new year. We're not a whole new podcast. We do have some changes. I'm going to go over there briefly, but Chris, let's not bury the lead. So you and I had some discussions. Our good friend here, TC, did such a good job with his guest hosting duties that we asked him to join us on a permanent basis going forward. So TC, my friend, welcome to the booth. There'll be a now three-man booth going forward. All right, guys, thanks so much. I uh, really appreciate the opportunity. You guys have a great show and uh, looking forward to what's to come and let's keep things rolling. Yeah, man, welcome, welcome. It's great to have you on board. And uh, like I said, look forward to what is coming up so TC, I thought we might do some side, sort of like a knighting ceremony to officially name you as as a co-host. I was thinking, <laughs> Chris, I was thinking if we went with like the lightsaber, there's a pretty good likelihood that I would fumble it, probably take off one of TC's ears. <laughs> so I said, mm, let's leave that one to the side. Then I thought, well, you know, we talk a lot of Marvel right now. Let's let's break out Milnir and, and see if we can knight him that way. But then I'm like, I'm not even sure I'm worthy. So TC, we'll just cut the formalities and we'll just get this thing started. Okay, sounds good. I, I thought I'd be worthy, but I, I'll take the. Uh, I, no, I think you're part right. of the team is good enough. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm worthy. You're probably worthy. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we all could right. come up with all sorts of things to knight him with in the uh, Marvel universe. We'll get to it uh, eventually. We'll we'll come up with a uh, a good answer for you there, TC. Sweet. All right, guys. So a couple other just minor changes. We're not making any big wholesale changes here. Uh, one minor thing you'll see going forward is the naming structure of all the episodes. They've been I'm kind of a creature of habit when it comes to consistency. We tried last year to shoot for at least two podcasts every month and starting our our, month, our, our second year here with July, we kind of accomplished that and we'll hopefully stick to that going forward. But Naming structure wise in your podcast feed, you might notice the episodes look very different. I'm going to take a page out of what Steve does for the Scavengers Assemble. And just a quick plug for our YouTube channel. He has really led the charge to get other content up. He's got Secrets of the Six Scale Scavenger. He dropped his first video of that. It's quick consume. It's good information. We have our assembles there. Uh, you'll also hear the audio only of this podcast there. So you'll, you'll see it a little bit different. So if it, if it looks a little different in your RSS feed, if you download the podcast through iTunes, Apple podcast, if you're an Android user, shouldn't really deter from that. But we hope that it might be a little bit easier to kind of find out about some of the topics that we're talking about with each of these episodes. And and thanks to TC for joining. We're going to branch out a little bit more in the six scale realm outside of Hot Toys. It's still going to be mostly Hot Toys focused, mostly Marvel. We will still talk Star Wars, but you know, with with Asmus really coming out strong recently as we'll get into, I think we also, you know, want to make sure that we're covering that stuff as well. There's so much other good figures out there that uh, you know we gotta we gotta give them some love, man. We gotta we gotta give them some love, even if not all of us are delving into those things. You know, now with three of us in the booth, I think there's a pretty good chance that you know one of us here or there might be uh, jumping on board with some of those other lines. So yeah, it'll be great to uh, expand the conversation. So what we've got on deck in episode 25 for everybody is we're going to cover some news. We have some new figures to talk about. We each have a collection update that ended up being a little bit more lengthy than I thought it would be for the three of us. We've got a really neat topic coming up. We've got San Diego Comic-Con coming up July 18th to the 21st. Some interesting things and speculation that we all have about that. And then finally, our audio feature figure review 
We're going to do a little bit of a retro review. We're going back to Spider-Man Homecoming, which is fitting with Far From Home dropping worldwide this week. We're going to be talking about the Stark suit, the original Spider-Man suit from Spider-Man Homecoming. And that number would be MMS 425. So looking forward to that. And essentially why we're why we pick that figure now is that is also the essentially the reissue from the Far From Home, the movie promo. There might be some differences we won't necessarily be able to speak to, but it will at least give our take on that. And anybody that remembers our the end of 2018 when we did a little bit of a recap, this figure, Chris, was one of our top five. It definitely was. It scored high in our 2018 ranking. And we had started the podcast after this figure came out and we just had never, it never really fit into our uh, review system. And what better time than now, like you said, uh, with the movie coming out, the suit's been in, I don't even know how many movies now, four or five movies. Um, looking forward to that part of the review. And of course, I mean, we're just like, we're Marvel zombies here. We just consume it all. And uh, we can't wait to go see Spider-Man Far From Home this week. We got a little six scale scavengers viewing what will be tomorrow night from recording with our good friend Raul. So yeah, look forward to that. How about you, TC? You're going to go see it? Um, I'm not going to see it. I'm not going to see it uh, tomorrow, but I plan on going either this weekend or next weekend. Yeah, but I'm looking forward to it. It's a, it's a great cap to the end of this, this Marvel phase, kind of wrap everything together and uh, launch, launch everything into, I believe it's phase four. That it will be the early. Uh, so we'll be spoiler free. Obviously, none of us have seen the movie. And even after we do, it'll be a few episodes before we even begin to talk about what happens. So we're very excited about that. And if you happen to be a member of our private Facebook group, you will also note that we have a spoiler ban for several weeks because just as as TC had said, not everybody can get out on opening night or even opening week. And we're first and foremost a collecting podcast, not a movie <laughs> review, although we do <laughs> all consume them very much so. All right, guys, let's start with the news. So, TC, we've got some Spider-Man figures to talk about and then another figure that'll be near and dear to your heart. And I'm not sure it'll be as much of uh, not that I'm not excited about it. I just I don't think I can commit to it. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. But TC, let's talk about the upgraded suit. This is the suit, TC, that we've seen in a lot of the Far From Home promos, the, the black and red suit we've seen from the trailer. I guess it's not really a spoiler. If it's a, To me, if it's in a trailer, it's not really a spoiler. But we see Peter Parker making his own suit it looks like a different take than the Stark suit. So TC, early thoughts about this release? I think it's a great release. It follows the original tech suit. You know, the colors, I know a lot of, I guess, Spider-Man true fanboys don't like the color scheme quite as much as the original red and blue. The red and blue is the classic, but it is, you know, it's it's part of, it's the main suit from Far From Home. So, I mean, you have to like it at least a little bit. I personally like it. I like red and black. I think it's going to look really good on the shelf. Chris? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I'm, I'm right there with you. I, I think it, it takes, you know, a little bit to take in that red and black, but it really does look great. I mean, just looking at the, watching the trailer, it's pretty cool. And then seeing these pictures of the figure, it's pretty similar to the, uh, to the tech suit, but there's just enough change with the coloring and, and a little bit of the design, his hands and his web shooters, it, it does, it's going to look really good along with all those other Spider-Man figures. And the one thing that I really like is that, I don't know how you're going to display it, but his like gliding accessory where, you know, he's, he's kind of flying through the air. And then also he's got the Tony Stark glasses, you know, that's going to be an, 
a nice little addition. And then we're going to get a brand new head sculpt of Tom Holland and some other, other accessory. I don't know what that could be, but maybe once we see the movie, we'll get a better idea of what that is. Real quick, Brian, before Brian steps in, they've also done a couple of things to improve this figure, which is nice. They moved the stitch line further back. So the, I guess the original uh, homecoming suit had the stitch line on the head pretty close to the, to the eyebrow slash eyes. And also presumably they're going to do what they did with the far from home movie promo edition. And I think they they might uh, not bolster, but put a little piece on the ankle joint to prevent hopefully the bunching at the ankles that the original tech suit had. So if they make those improvements and then maybe the black hides some of the creases, uh, maybe it allows for a little more articulation and uh, maybe a little more long-term durability. So I think that's those are all potential positives as well. Yeah, TC, I'm glad you mentioned that because every time I look at mine on the on the shelf, there's just such a there's a gap with that ankle and it. The suit is just so form fitting that it like you can't not get that little indentation there. So if they can figure that out, I think it'll be great. Obviously, this is spoiling a little bit, but this was a day one pre order. This was about as quick as I could have a day one pre-order. <laughs> I think this is one of those figures. There's sometimes I'll, I'll have a day one pre-order that when I happen to be, you know, between three and four Eastern time, when it's up on Sideshow, I'll grab it. This is one I kept like refreshing the website. I'm like, I just, I, I need to get it there as, as soon as possible. Not that I was worried about it selling out. I, I think the, the, the shenanigans that went on with the Scarlet Spider that we talked about the last time out, I didn't think was going to apply for this one. But yeah, it'll be really interesting. I can't even really speculate too much on the accessory. I, I know I've mentioned on the podcast before, too. I sometimes have a tendency to go spoil a movie for myself. I haven't done it as much with this one as I've had in the past because I don't think the stakes are quite as high, but... I am definitely looking forward to seeing this one. And yeah, I, this is just, it's going to look great. I think like TC, as you said, the the colors are going to contrast well. And I haven't read up with a lot of the current Spider-Man comics, but I've heard that this is, this color scheme is, is something they've gone to in the past with, I think it, Chris, it might be the superior Spider-Man, the, that look, but mm-hmm. The, yeah, that sounds uh, about right. Yeah, so I am definitely a fan. I'm also looking at the accessories, Chris. You mentioned the Stark glasses. I can't wait to add that to my Infinity War Tony Stark kit bash from Super MC Toys because that's the one that I I keep humming and hawing about. If I want to get the you know the third party accessory for that, I won't use the web parachute thing at all but i'm looking here at this little iphone and i'm like that's definitely something that i'd probably list on ebay (laughs) i feel the uh the parachute thing actually could give like an extra dynamic pose option because you're not actually bending any of the any of the joints you're just kind of moving the arms out and spreading the legs out and then you just attach the magnets and maybe you can get like a flying pose out of it without hurting the suit that's that is a good call so i i'm hoping to I feel like we can't talk about this figure without also kind of mentioning the review that we'll have for the the homecoming suit. But yeah, I, I think when I look at this one, guys, it looks material wise very similar to the homecoming suit. Not the fabric parts, but the you know the blue on, on the suit. So it'll it'll definitely be very very interesting to uh, to look at that. But that is this figure is got a long. <laughs> runway i think this is next october so we're talking you know this is one of those that's like over a year away i don't i wish this one came a little bit early Uh, i mean i love (laughs) spider-man don't get me wrong and this is also good for the budget to have this out in the runway a little bit yeah it's october 2020 to december 2020 and i don't know i mean it might it is pretty far out but who knows we might get might get it a little bit early, but it is nice, TC, you're talking about some of those improvements to see Hot Toys put in, you know, the, the R&D to, to see how they can improve on these figures and, and to see the progression of what works and what doesn't. I mean, that's what it's all about. You would 
hate to see them just do the same thing over and over again and never improve. And we're really seeing that with a lot of these materials that they're testing out, that they're using. So, I mean, I think this is just the next next step in the progression for uh, the Spider-Man figures. So let's keep talking about Spider-Man figures, guys. That was MMS 542. We also have MMS 540 and MMS 541. Staying with Spider-Man Far From Home, we have the Stealth Suit and Stealth Suit Deluxe. It is the same figure for both. The big difference is the diorama base from the company is called Studio Hive. And now, TC, I don't know, have you, have you ever heard of Hot Toys actually outsourcing a, a diorama base before that they didn't do themselves? I have not. I, You know, I, I think this is the first time they publicly announced that kind of thing. Even if they had, I'd never heard of it, but this seems like it's the first, but it seems like it's probably not the last. I mean, Chris, we are talking about a $70 stand. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 70 bucks is, is a big deal. Uh, the one thing that really, the one big thing that's really going for it is that it's, it is a character base. It's molten man. It, it's not just bits and pieces of broken up, you know, Ultron bots or whatever it might be. So I'm a lot of people are like, well, you know, we talked about it on the assemble, like, you can't really complain about them never making a molten man. You have a, a representation of it. Not that I'm sure there's too many people clamoring for that, but anyway, it is, it's a really cool dynamic base. It's got some, the prototype has some just insane detail. Yeah. That $70 price tag is just, it's pushing me away from going with the deluxe for probably the first time. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was an easy decision for me to make because that's something I would just probably sell anyways. But this one's going to be a little bit sooner. This one's July to September 2020. It's, it'll come out several months earlier than that. The uh, the upgraded suit. I, it, it's funny with this. I mean, I, I will get this because I love Spider-Man. And without even seeing this movie, I have a strong feeling I'm, I'm going to like it. TC, a lot I've seen some, not necessarily criticism of the figure, but a lot of people that don't collect Spider-Man as a focus have, have kind of passed on this one because it just, it doesn't look like Spider-Man. And I think even in, there was a little featurette that Tom Holland did for, for Sony. And, you know, we went over to talk about the different suits and basically he was purposely not trying to look like Spider-Man in, in Europe because he did, for whatever reason, that's just what they kind of left it as. I'm sure that'll be a little bit more explained in the movie, but I, I guess I can't really blame him, TC. No, it's not It's not the classic suit. I feel, especially if you are not a hardcore Spider-Man collector, it's an easy pass because, you know, if you have the tech suit and then you go and you upgrade to the to the upgraded suit, I don't know, I guess it, should chose my words better there, but if you make that purchase and then say you have the Iron Spider, those three are kind of the big, the big three at this point. And this one's kind of a, I don't know, I haven't seen the movie, but presumably not quite, you know, it's not as important. So I guess it's, it is an easier pass and it's all black. So some people are not fans of the stealth look. Uh, I personally think it'll look pretty good next to if you have, say you have like a concept cap. You have the concept Iron Man, and then you put those three together. I think that would look pretty good, but I can see why people are staying away, at least before the movie starts. We haven't seen what it does in the movie, so time will tell. Yeah, that's that's a good point, too. A lot of, I know I personally changed my opinion about some of this stuff. You know, if it's released before the movie, then you see the movie and you feel a little bit differently about it. But that's one benefit of something that's clearly not going to sell out anytime soon. There are those of us in our group, and we love to sell T-shirts on, on T Public for our, our day one pre-order, the shirt Roy put together. And it's, you know, it's been one of our catchphrases over the last year or so. There's, for a non-exclusive, there's no reason to run out and get this. If you're not quite sure, watch the movie first, then make your decision. And then, and then even at that point, you could probably well wait till early next spring before you'd even have to think about making a decision on it. 
Very, very true. Yeah, some of these uh, some of these figures don't necessarily need us to jump right on them. But uh, for me, I I really I like the contrast in style, kind of like t- what TC said. It's just it's a different look. I'm like I love that that just stealthiness of this figure. It's kind of tactical. You know, he's got some cool armor on there. It's just a different look for Spider-Man. I've, you know, I've never really seen it before. Spider-Man Noir from Into the Spider-Verse is like a old school kind of version of this. And, you know, it is neat to see this style. We don't get a different head sculpt. He just has the eyes behind the mask. And I think that is another reason why, you know, some people are not super crazy about it. But I don't know. It, as we'll discuss in our collection updates, you know, I'm definitely I'm definitely interested in it. And for me, like I kind I kind of get like a snake eyes vibe, like a G.I. Joe snake eyes vibe from it. So I I'm a huge fan of that character. So, you know, that's another reason why I kind of like it. So we didn't mention it about the upgraded suit and then obviously with these two things. So TC, this was something a little bit different that Sideshow has done. And I'm not sure that we've seen it, that it's going to be a trend or if it's just a one-time thing. But TC, none of these figures had a non-refundable deposit on them. Yeah, that that's, that's actually pretty interesting. Neither the upgraded suit nor the stealth suit had that NRD. It's interesting because Sideshow, for years... They've had that cancellation policy where if you set up a payment plan uh, and you don't have an NRD, then if you make a payment on that payment plan and you cancel, they'll charge you $20 or a a similar fee. The NRD replaces that cancellation policy, that fee. That cancellation policy has never really ever need to be, it's never needed to be implemented. So um, the fact that they're going away from the NRD, maybe it signifies they're trying to get uh, business from other companies. I don't know if they feel you know, too many customers are going to the smaller retailers, the big bad toy stores, the Time Walker toys, Alter Ego maybe, but it is interesting. We'll see if it sticks. I don't really have a clue if it's going to. We only, we've only seen it on two figures. So, You know who's a really big fan of this, TC? Me. <laughs> and me. And I'm sure everybody. <laughs> as we'll, as we'll talk about the collection update, I, I had a figure I pre-ordered and then instantly gave that back. So, uh, but I think the one thing that we've seen, and I, I think it was Zach with Collecting Weekly had had found in the fine print. May have been Zach, uh, but if not, I'll give him credit anyways. I'm sure it was. It may have even been one of the three of us. But the 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 fine print is the cancellation will only kick in if you've actually made one payment towards your payment plan. So I think what we could do as collectors is if you decide that you really don't want it, make sure you do that before that first payment hits. And Chris, I know like you and myself, we like to stretch it out as far as possible. Mm -hmm. Like if there's seven available, I'll do seven. If it's six, five, sometimes it's only two with some of these figures with, a little bit shorter of a runway. It definitely is something to keep in mind. I mean, of all the figures I've got currently on uh, pre-order, these are the, probably the least last two that I would ever consider about it. But I think it's definitely something that the three of us will track going forward for sure. Yeah. Any new figures that come out going forward, we'll definitely keep a close eye on those NRDs to see if it if it's a trend or if it's uh, just kind of a, one time, one time thing. Getting some uh, Spider Man enthusiasts in on the uh, the Hot Toys game. So before we we'll stick with Sideshow here real quick. Okay. And this this was Nick in our private Facebook group posted mm-hmm. a email image. I love seeing those email things. It means it's usually <laughs> good news, unless it's a delay, like we talked about with the Mark Forty Three going away until next February. But I'm not bitter. Joker quarter scale. Joker quarter scale. The so it looks like probably some of the least surprising news we've gotten in a while is it looks like the Darth Maul will be arriving early at Sideshow instead of I believe it was October when those were going to start hitting. It looks like it's going to be between July and September. Hopefully for people that got in on those day one pre-orders are hopefully going to get their their figures and those first batches 
Yeah, I know our good friend PJ, the Paradox Nerd, already has his DX speeder figure in hand, has already done an unboxing video. He's already got his review up on his YouTube channel. Highly recommend checking that out. If you see it and you see it in 4K, you're probably going to change your mind if you don't already have it on, on pre-order. I know we don't we don't talk as much Star Wars as we'd like to around these parts, but that's what Rogue One 6 was started for with Matt and Roy, and they're going to be getting another episode off the ground soon. So good news for Nick, good news for our fellow scavengers, and looking forward to seeing that in hand more. Cletus goes goes with the, uh, the double pack, the DX-16 and DX-17. Give a shout out to the hammer. <laughs> he, going big <laughs> yeah that was and anyways i know probably some of you've already either listened to the the recent scavengers assemble or definitely make sure you check it out on youtube but it was awesome to have cletus on there and definitely check out his channel i've been checking out a lot of his recent content and he's got a lot of funko stuff out there but he's also really gotten into hot toys and great to see it's great to see that anybody can be a collector, whether you're uh, one of us, whether you're a professional boxer. It's it's so cool to see different people get excited about the same thing, essentially. Yeah, it was awesome to have Cletus on. He's uh, He's got a great perspective, and I just love his tenacity in <laughs> getting into the, the Hot Toys game. He's really gotten... gotten uh, fast and, and and furious into this whole six scale realm but uh yeah just great he's got great stuff like brian said on his his youtube channel cletus selden and then also collecting cletus on instagram all kinds of great posts and and he's going to be at sdcc producing lots of content so we'll all be staying tuned to what he's got to say Definitely for sure. So guys, and last but not least in the news update, and I know TC, you've been chomping at the bit to talk about this figure in particular, but I know around our scavenger group recently, there's been just a wee bit of excitement about the Asmus Lord of the Rings Gandalf the Grey. Now TC, you've got a little bit more information about that. This is a new line, a new premier line that that Asmus is is rolling out. And I have to admit, although it won't be one that I'm chasing because one leads into many, and I don't necessarily think I want to end up with the whole fellowship in one of my detoffs, this does look pretty amazing to steal the buzzword of my co-host <laughs> over here. Yeah, it it, uh, it does look amazing. I think what you're saying about the Fellowship is interesting. You know, they're not hot toys, so if they produce the Fellowship, it's not. I don't think it's going to be like seven of the figures in one year. It's going to be spaced out over time. But yeah, uh, it looks like a great figure. It looks, you know, I guess I'll go down the list. You know, they're using their, I believe, their Adam body. I'm not familiar familiar with that. The figure is supposed to be about 30 centimeters tall, which is pretty accurate to the height uh, of the character in the movie. If you expand that uh, beyond the six scale to life size, it has 36 points of articulation. It has the rotatable eyeballs, uh, obviously the great head sculpt. It's got a uh, plenty of different aged hands. It has the fabric made wizard hat, the dark gray robe, dark gray cape, the soil gray inner shirt, pair of blue pants, the leather blue belt, and fabric boots. Comes with several weapons, the glamdring with the elvish printing, the two wizard staff and the, well, this is not a weapon, but the, the pipe from uh, Gandalf's pipe. And then it also has a diorama base and the diary of Moria. So it comes with a lot of stuff. Asmus is really betting big on this figure. You know, they're going to show it at SDCC, I believe. Gandalf the White follows it. So if you don't produce a quality Gandalf the Grey, you are really putting yourself in a bind. I think what they're doing is good too. I think they know they can't compete with Hot Toys. So Hot Toys obviously is in mass produces high quality figures. They can't compete with that. But what they can do is carve a niche. If they have a popular franchise with Lord of the Rings, if they produce a quality figure, and I know that's a big if, because uh, Asmus has let down many collectors in the past. If they can do it right, if they can get the rooted hair correct, if they can kind of go above even what Hot Toys can do with rooted hair, if they can carve out that niche, I think they can be successful because I think they're going to then 
pull away some of the hot toys consumers or not pull away, but bring in some of the hot toys consumers that in the past, they may not have thought about Asmus as being a top quality figure provider. So if they can do things right, if they can get this one figure right, I think it can launch the company at least a, a, a good bit. Um, but if they do things wrong, if it doesn't come out good, they kind of double down on Gandalf the White and things could go south quickly. So it's a big release. I'm gambling on it. I love Gandalf the character and I'm looking forward to it. And I put my $20 down. <laughs> I'm really happy for you. I know I'm happy for pretty much the rest. I think everybody else on the admin team, although uh, Chris and I are sitting this one out. I don't know if Roy has said what he's doing, but I know Matt and Steve are also picking that up as, as scavengers and the the buzz has been really strong about it. I know there was some initial hesitation just based on the price. Again, going back to our friend Zach with Collecting Weekly, and I know he has a popular segment on, on his show with with uh, grind grind what grinds my gears, and I think that was going to be something. But I think when they showed the price, and I think. I think on Big Bad Toy Store and some of the other retailers, it's actually coming in a little bit less than expected. And you, as you said, TC, it does come with quite a bit. Like I said, it's not that I don't like it because I also love Lord of the Rings. I mean, who doesn't? I just I, I couldn't have him as a standalone. And if they eventually redid that that crown series with all the fellowship, that's that would be way out of where i want to go as as a collector i'm definitely rooted in my my marvel zombiness right now i'm right there with you brian i i adore lord of the rings is just one of the best movie franchises and obviously the the novels are just epic gandalf being one of the biggest characters in that series it's it is tempting and I really do appreciate the quality of this crown series that they're, that they're coming out with. I mean, the facial likeness to Ian McKellen with the hair and everything, I mean, it is just, it is stunning. And I think, you know, they've got some time to refine the way the clothes fit. I know Allison was, you know, saying, it could tighten things up a little bit better. You know, we'll, we'll see, we'll see what the the final product looks like in six to eight months. And I'm just, I am, I'm excited too. I, if money was no object, I mean, I would obviously be in on this. And I think, I think it just opens up that door and, and competition is good for everybody to push the limits to what you can do in a six scale figure. I'm really digging it, and I, I think a lot of people will jump on board. You know, it's, it's just not for me right, you know, at this time, you know, where I'm at with collecting. And, uh, yeah, I'm curious, TC, which – did you go straight f- from Asmus, or did you go with a different retailer? Or I did. did it from? Well, I went straight through Asmus and um, the, the direct uh, website, and I guess I just did because I – you know the the price difference wasn't wasn't extensive, so it was three fifty shipped. I know there's not going to be any tax because it's an international shipment, I mm-hmm. believe. And uh, so, Big Bad Toy Store has it for three thirty. You pay the four dollars shipping or the ten dollars shipping, depending on what you want to choose. So it's you're looking at three thirty five to three forty. So I ended up just going directly through the the company. Mm-hmm. So maybe that'll help me get it earlier. Who knows? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I actually. Uh, I tried to watch the full trilogy this weekend. I said I said I was going to watch the full Lord of the Rings trilogy this weekend, but I made it through the Fellowship and part of the the Two Towers, and <laughs> I did notice a couple things on the figure. It's the way Gandalf's clothing lies, you know, you know, on the actor, it, it drapes more, mm-hmm. but it's like, it's really difficult to get that on a six scale figure because you just don't have the weight that you do of, of an actual full set of clothing on in life size form. So I can see why some people say maybe it looks a little thick. It should drape a little more, but it's just very difficult to get the quality of clothing in six scale form that's going to do that. And it looks, you know, it's about 90% there. So for me, it captures the figure. And to me that's uh that's what I want in a figure like that. Just to capture the essence of the character. And so but anyway, I'm looking forward to it and I'm just gonna I'm just hoping that they come through. 
because uh, it would be nice to see them continue that line. Yeah, I mean, it'd be a shame if we had to just bring in Lord of the Rings more to this to, this discussion. <laughs> I mean, as I'm thinking there, I'm like, I, I I always love when I have some of the soundtrack from Howard Shore pop in my uh, my shuffle play on on my iPhone and and whatnot, and it, it uh, it's so it's so epic. I mean that 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 term gets thrown around quite a bit, but that has aged really well. And I mean, the Hobbit trilogy, as we've all talked about, it isn't necessarily as good. I still like it. The especially the extended editions of each of the 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 Fellowship, the Lord of the Rings, and the Two Towers, and Return of the King. I I I was a little jealous of UTC going back to do that. I'd love to have the time to do that. It would take me several weeks to probably get through those, but I definitely want to get that on my to do list here. So, all right, guys, let's shift from the news and go over to our collection update. So Chris, let's start with you and then I'll throw it over to TC. So what do you got new coming up, Chris? <laughs> well, I, as some of you might've seen on- Oh, by the way, some, I, 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 need to ch- I need to change your PayPal yeah. password. Yes, you do. You really do. <laughs> might've been sipping, sipping on a little something um, the other week. And I don't know, like last week when I was went to pre-order uh, one of these other figures on the list, I noticed that I had pre-ordered Spider-Punk and I literally did not remember doing that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I wish I had that kind of a problem. Uh, so anyway, I, I don't know. I had him on my wish list, so I don't know. I don't know. I might have. You don't, you don't have to explain something. yourself to us. <laughs> but anyway, I, I don't know. Months ago, I was like, eh, I'm not going to get that. It seems to be a common theme for me. But uh, no, I don't. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna stick with it. I think my daughter, my oldest daughter, I've got the Marvel Legends of Spider Punk, and she just loves that figure. And I showed her a picture of this one a while back and she was like, are you going to get that one? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, spider punk just added to the pile of Spider-Man figures. (laughs) So, and then I, I did get the Spidey, um, the stealth suit, the regular version. And I also got the upgraded suit. So the Spider-Man collection is (laughs) growing significantly or will be pretty extensive by the time these figures come out and then i i went another direction this company kind of popped out of nowhere as far as kind of marvel characters go but uh young rich toys came out with a spot on likeness of miles morales from into the spider verse they actually came out with two figures and I got the battle suit one, which comes, it's his, the black and and red suit. And he's got his Jordans and he's got another head sculpt with like the mask half pulled over sweatshirt, like all kinds of accessories. So that's SP002. And I got that from TNS figures, pretty different design. It's the cartoon style, but I think when He's got his suit on, his Spidey suit. I think it'll look awesome with all the rest of the figures. And I hope, you know, I, I, w- I wish that we could get this stuff from Hot Toys, you know, or one of the other licensed uh, retailers in six scale. Again, hopefully this pushes things in that direction. You know, there's some other characters from that movie that I would I would totally love to see in six scale form. So, yeah. That's pretty much it for my pre-orders, but I did, I decided to ax one of my, one of my other pre-orders and TC, you might be the lone ranger on this. Uh, this is a sad day. This is <laughs> <Yeah>. sad. <laughs> the, uh, Mark L, Mark L accessory pack. I, uh, I cut ties with that one. I, I was going through all my pre-orders and I realized, you know, as cool as all those accessories might look and in theory you know i might might uh display with one or two of them but uh in reality it's probably not going to happen so 
I cut ties with it and I did lose a coupon in the mix, but uh, I got some rewards points back. So yeah, I'm uh, jumping on Brian's uh, pre-order, <laughs> pre-order canceling train. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, so what, uh, what do you got going on? So I, I, I did s- s- uh, some similar stuff as you. I, I have not pre-ordered spider punk, although, you know, Spider-Man is such a fun figure. It's a fun figure to, to look at. So I, I, it may happen in the future. I don't know yet. But I did pre-order the stealth suit with zero NRD, which is a huge bonus. I pre-ordered the upgraded suit, again, with zero NRD. And I also pre-ordered the Gandalf figure from Asmus Toys. We've talked about that. I'm, I'm looking forward to that one a lot. And uh, this is a little bit different, but when I had actually... I as well had the accessory set on pre-order. I'm losing confidence by the day, but I still have it on pre-order. And I do have two of the Markels. Um, I have one displayed with the Tony Stark head sculpt, one displayed just in its base form. Well, the second one that came in, I was looking at it, and all of a sudden I was doing like a quick inspection. And on the left leg on the calf, there's like a deep scratch in the paint. And I was just devastated. So I was trying to see if I could just not do anything about it, but it's just in my head. So I ended up emailing Sideshow for a calf replacement because I know you can take apart the calf. They ended up sending me an entire leg. I believe it's at UPS right now. So that's coming my way. I just had to, I had to at least request it just because it's just, you know, it's 400 bucks. And I just hope that, you know, it doesn't look like someone keyed the left calf of the, Markel. So that's at UPS. And I ended up selling as sad as this might be Yondu deluxe, which I really do like that figure. It's Mm -hmm. awesome. The problem is I don't have any of the other guardians of the galaxy two figures. Uh, I don't plan on getting Gamora and, you know, I have my Avengers lined up in one shelf. I'm going to have my end game figures on the top shelf. Yondu was just sitting at the bottom shelf by himself. He was lonely, and I, I was just like, eh, I don't know. I'm not, I, I, I'm not going to expand on that right now. Uh, the, the line. So, if I can get the, you know, the three hundred and fifty dollars plus for it, uh, then I went ahead and did that, and so I can apply that to other figures that are coming down the line because they're coming fast and furious. So, I had to make that little shift. But that's about it for me right now. Uh, you know. As Brian knows, you got to make room. You got to make room and, you know, it it is with those, those outlier figures, if they don't quite fit into a run or, you know, a shelf or whatever, it is sometimes hard to, to keep those, but uh, no, it's good. It's good. It's your collection funding your collection. And it's it's healthy to let go of stuff. It is. It is. (laughs) Even if it's an accessory or in a base or anything. So. (laughs) <laughs> all right you, Brian? yeah so i'll go over pre-orders first because i'll i'll just echo what my co-hosts have done here as well with the spider-man upgraded suit the stealth suit so uh, i will say that i did pre-order the advanced suit from the ps4 game based on our friend the paradox nerds review and figure collecting for dummies uh jenkin wong both did awesome I had that, but then I kind of fell into a situation where I had the opportunity to do some things that I have been on the lookout for a while, and I found some deals. And once I found said deals, one of them was semi-planned. The other one was I was, you know, when in Rome, might as well just go for it. So I had to not necessarily scramble because I basically just tapped out my current budget. So to make room, like as TC just said, to make room for upcoming stuff, you got to have to have stuff going out to kind of to fund that. But I did find and I've been looking for the Mark III war machine from Captain America Civil War for a while. And that the prices on that have just skyrocketed. And on eBay, I've had a safe search for a while and I keep looking at the ones that come up and they're just so high. And then I saw one that came in and it was for a really small minimum bid. And I just followed it all the way up through. 
and I couldn't believe it, but it ended up being like less than double retail. So obviously probably one of the lowest sold in several months, maybe not even, maybe in the last year. So patience definitely pays off. Um, I will say that the description of the figure maybe wasn't as strong as it could have been. Maybe people got missed if they had, were looking for the MMS number and and whatnot. So I lucked out with that. And then as I was going around, I'm like, well, now my other one I'm looking for is the Mark 1. And the price on that one has been well north of the Mark 3. And I just looking around almost immediately right after I got the, the Mark 3 one. And... I saw a, a listing and I, it was, I just, I couldn't believe the price because it was probably well south of most of the other ones that have been out there and worked out a deal for that one. So needless to say, I needed to make some room. So <laughs> I, I have, I have both these figures behind me. I have taken the box out. Both of them came basically new sealed as well. So that had it going for it. It's not like even they were, they were used. Both of them were just open for inspection. So basically, in my book, that's brand new. So that is where I'm at. I am no regrets whatsoever. I'm Both of them are just fantastic. I know, TC, you're asking me which one I like better earlier, the one or the three. And The uh, fans need to know. The fans need to know. Um, I don't know. I'm still, I, I'm a little partial to the Mark I just because of the nostalgia about that. I probably like Iron Man 2 more than most. I know, Chris, you and I have talked about this before. So I'll, but for the next episode, because I want to get them out and displayed in, in my detox soon, I'll, TC, I'll, I'll have that answer for you. <laughs> yeah, it's a, that's a great figure. And, uh, you know, actually, I think the Mark I is just by a hair a little bit better built. It's just, it's it's MMS 331, but I swear Hot Toys, someone in Hot Toys loves War Machine because they put extremely, they put a ton of attention to the War Machine product. So uh, it's a great figure. It's probably the best one in my opinion. I love the Mark III though, but uh, those are two awesome, awesome pickups, man. I mean, it's funny too, you mentioned that TC because like the MMS numbers are pretty close together because I know that they did that, the reissue of the Mark uh, Mark one pretty close right before civil war came out. So the Mark three and the Mark one are actually really close. So it's interesting to see the contrasting styles of, of both and kind of the engineering. So outside of Chris going to chase down the uh, Mark two from Iron Man three, which technically wasn't ever in the film, I'm going to chalk myself up to being complete with, with war machine at this point. So, because I have the one from Age of Ultron, which is ex- essentially the same figure, just with a, a different paint scheme. But anyways, so bearing the lead here a little bit to fund that, I know our good friend Steve has been on the lookout for a Scarlet Witch from Civil War for a long time. And he's a great uh, bargain shopper. I mean, when we had him back, Chris, I don't remember the episode number, but we had him as a guest. It was either 17 or, or 18. And he is a pretty stern negotiator, but as we do with our group, we help out fellow scavengers. And I know I needed to make a little room in my budget for upcoming figures. I know he's been on the lookout for it. So we worked out a deal. I actually just dropped that in the mail to him earlier today. And I'll take another pass through my collection to look at some bases and potentially some head sculpts and stuff that I've got. But other than that, I'm actually pretty good. I'm like with upcoming figures on the way with pre-orders feeling pretty comfortable. But as we'll talk about in a little bit, that could get really thrown off the rails if we see some pretty exciting stuff at San Diego Comic-Con. Yeah, that's happening. They're definitely <laughs> going to be revealing something big at SDCC. They always do. All right. So that is as good a segue as we're going to get on episode 25 here. So guys, let's flip gears. Let's talk a little bit about San Diego Comic-Con. Going to be July 18th to the 21st, 2019 this year. So TC, you were nice enough to contribute a little game that we're going to play. Instead of just going through and rattling off what we think is going to happen, we're going to play a little game of True or False SDC Preview Edition. So... Chris, TC, I'm going to ask you a couple true or false questions. I want to alternate between the two of you and we'll see where that discussion leads. And this is just, this is, I will say, purely speculation on our part. We don't know anything. 
if we did, we certainly wouldn't just be having a podcast about this stuff. We're not the experts here. So guys, TC, I'll throw this one to you first. Will Hot Toys reveal, drum roll please, an Iron Man Mark I die cast? I think that's going to be true. Ooh. I, I, <laughs> I originally on the, one of the assembles, I, I said it's going to be MMS 600. But, you know, MMS 550 is right around the corner. And Iron Man's hot right now. I mean, it is, it's, it's hot. It's right off Endgame. Uh, I think now would be the perfect time to uh, do something like that, to make that big reveal. So I think, I think we're going to get it. I know they could always, they could always, you know, obviously they can do whatever they want, but I think it's a perfect place to showcase it and uh, it'll get a lot of hype if they did. So I'm saying true. Chris, what about you? I'm right there with you also. I, I think it's true. And could you, I mean, just the, the buzz is just gonna, it's gonna blow up if, uh, if they reveal a Mark one die cast. Oh, They've it's gonna got, be epic. Oh my God. There's going to be so many people, you know, fighting to take pictures and and uh it's going to be the the talk of all the you know within all the uh, six scale community all the different podcasts the youtubers i mean it's just going to be the number one topic in my opinion and you know they've got hot toys they put out the hall of armor you know so they've got that sitting on uh on Sideshow, they've got it available right now, uh, at least the individual ones, I think. So I think they're kind of setting us up. And, you know, they had done the Mark II. I mean, Mark III is a little bit old now, but it would be pretty sweet for them to do the Mark I and die cast. And then everybody will want to buy that has the other ones already is going to want to buy that Hall of Armor or you know, go for, go for the Mark one. So I'm, I'm in on it. I'm in on Mark one diecast. All right. So you're both, you're both going with true. I'm going to, I'm going to throw a monkey wrench in this. And then, so you both think it's going to happen. It's not really a true or false. It's a multiple choice here. Chris, I'll go to you first. If they release it, is it a standard release or is it a toy fair release? I think it's a standard release. TC. Yeah, there's no chance. It's definitely standard release. No chance. It's Toy Fair. Yeah, that, they're not going to limit anything with that figure. No, they they want to make all the money with that that they can. So, yeah. uh, and just for everybody listening at home, I agree completely with, with both of you, and I will lose my flipping mind if that happens. Do you think? <laughs> do you think it might be a DX series? Ooh, Ooh even better. What uh, if it's like a uh, separate Tony Stark? Just with... stop, just Chris. Just stop now. You... <laughs> How oh. much farther down the rabbit hole do we want to go? <laughs> That's an eight hundred dollar thing. I know. Two pack. Yeah, I'll, I'll buy it. Yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> let's next true or false. Will uh, TC? I'll throw this one to you first, and we'll give this uh, throw bone to our Star Wars listeners out there. TC, will Hot Toys reveal Han Solo, Chewbacca, and Lando from Empire Strikes Back as we approach the 40th anniversary of that movie? Mm. For a while, I, I thought this was going to be true. I thought Hot Toys might do something special, give the Chewie Han Solo two pack, maybe put C three PO pieces in the uh, with that with that release. I'm going to go false. I think this is Marvel's time. I think that they're going to go heavy Marvel. I just it's it's hot right now. I know it's the, the anniversary for Empire Strikes Back, but I'm going to go false that the Chewbacca and Han are not going to be shown. Chris, uh, our poor Star Wars collectors. Matt is crying. He's crying because he wants to see those. He wants to see him at SDCC because he's going to be there. He's not going to see him. <laughs> You're not going to see him. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I hate to have the same answer, but I, I just don't, I mean, they don't, they're not putting the money or their focus on Star Wars right now. Steve has a really good graph that he's made of the figures coming out. And it's been forever since they've uh, announced a Star Wars figure. And, March. Yeah, it's been March. Yeah. So, and then as you progress throughout the, you know, the year, 
the Star Wars figures in, it just stops. It just stops. So as much as I'd like to see them, they've all three of them have been teased in other promotional images. I don't know. I just don't, I don't feel it. All right. Last one back to you, TC. Do we see Thor from Endgame any version? Yeah. Yeah, we do. We do. I, I think, uh, I think the final battle Thor is coming and I think they might show the uh, Thorbowski as well. I think we're getting both. They're going SDCC. Collectors are going to love it. And it's going to be a celebration in Marvel world. (laughs) (laughs) How about you, Chris? (laughs) Well, I'm half, I I, I agree halfway with that. I think they're going to have the end of the movie Thor with his suit on, but with his big belly, with his big braided beard and and everything. I think we'll see that. I do not think that we will see Thorbowski. (laughs) I don't think we'll see it at all. As cool as it would be, I just don't feel it happening. Yeah, I'm with you too. I'd love to see it. I think some third party will scoop in and, and try to do that, but I think it's all but a certainty. We see that Final bonus question here, Chris. Do we think we see a Mysterio figure at SDCC? Oh, man. Um, the, answer I, is, the answer is yes, by the yes, way. Yes, I, I <laughs> think we will. I think we will, but it's, it's, is it going to be one of those teases? Is it going to be a tease like Vulture? Is it going to be one of those ones that everybody just really wants, but we just don't? end up getting the finished product yeah it could i know it could be i uh i don't know i I, it's sdcc comes after the movie so you know maybe hot toys just waiting for some fan reaction i don't know what do you think chris is it well i think that i mean that might be true they probably have a prototype made up if they do have it made up do we get a gyllenhaal head sculpt I don't know. I think we I think we see it. I think we see a Jill and a Hall head sculpt and I'm calling it right now. I think he ends up as a top five Marvel villain. Wow. Wow. I think it's coming too. With just like you said, Brian, head sculpt, I, the whole shebang. So I think the only reason we didn't get the vulture is just the the, the sure yeah, scale the of the fl- of the flight wings with that. I mean I don't, I never, obviously none of us saw it in person, but I, I have to imagine the, the wingspan on that. It would probably be like three detoffs wide, if not more. And nobody has that kind of space. I mean, as cool as it would say to have that, I mean, I probably would have just taken the, the vulture figure without the flight suit. Cause I think that's still cool, but I, I think Mysterio has got a chance to, mm-hmm. you know, usurp vulture and, and i thought vulture was one of the be- i think vulture is one of the top five villains i mean that that scene in the car right before the dance the homecoming dance that's still one of like the top scenes that they've ever been able to pull off in the mcu so i mean it's just uh yeah if they made that figure that would be like oh. something like a, a steve de rose exclusive <laughs> <laughs> because he's one of the few people Seriously. that have some space to uh put that out there but uh all right, let's go to the lightning round here, Chris. Your, we have to go with a figure that we have not seen whatsoever. It has not been teased. It hasn't been rumored at all. What would be like if they dropped it? You would just lose your you lose your mind. <laughs> it's funny because, like, I'm not into the game or anything like that. Yeah, Spider Gwen would be awesome. I think getting a female, you know, spider. Char- you know, Spider Universe, Spider Verse character would be just great for all those uh, gamers, and then also, you know, into the Spider Verse. But uh, Spider Gwen, I think, would be awesome. I would, you know, if, if they release this figure, this would be a a minute one pre order. It would be <laughs> the it's the one four scale cap. I mean, we have the you know you got the forty two, the forty three, the forty five for the one four scale Iron Man's. Iron Man figures, and you got the quarter scale Mark III. I, Cap is, you know, he's linked with Iron Man. He, he, he's, you gotta, it's, it's his time. If they released it like an Avengers one Cap or a first Avenger Cap, I would totally be on board with that, and I'd love to see that. The die cast shield, 
Absolutely. Uh, as much as I love Cap, I don't know, TC, if I could get into a whole nother scale. <laughs> well, you only have to do the one. The one figure. <laughs> one leads to many, my friend. Ah. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to cheat because my figure would be, you know, would be the Mark One. A, a kind of cheating as well, because I think they're almost definitely going to do this. It's going to be the Endgame Hulk. I still think he steals the show every time he's on screen. And outside of that, I'm drawing a blank and I am a horrible moderator to, <laughs> to not have that in mind. But anyways, this, it's still a fun exercise to kind of speculate about that and kind of just it's see. I, I think we're going to see some cool stuff. I think, as we've talked about in the past, I think it's just based on you know tc you've been collecting longer than both chris and i have but we've been around we've all been around the block long enough to know that just because we see a prototype on display at san Diego comic-con does not guarantee that it will ever get made i mean valkyrie and cyborg and how is cyborg and why is cyborg and all the star wars figures and stuff that they've had out there you know crossbones and we could go on and on and on that just never really saw the light of day, even though the display were just was just incredible. So I, I think if it looks cool and it's a popular character and it's not an obscure one, I think the chances are a little bit more likely that it gets made for the fringe characters, for the supporting cast, then I start to get a little worried if they'll ever make it or not. Yeah, I uh I think you're right. I, you know, sometimes Hot Toys just likes to show off. I mean, that's you know, that's fine. I mean, it's SDCC. I mean, they like, you know, they're capable of making lots of different types of figures on uh, many different scales. So sometimes they just like to show their work. So, yeah, not everything's going to be on pre-order. Uh, just wait for Sideshow. That's your cue. All right, guys. So we will be looking towards that. And because I've got a vacation coming up, a family vacation coming up this month, our next episode will probably be, it might even be approaching three weeks from now. So we'll have a little bit of a break in between. And then Chris, you go out on vacation. So it'll, it'll really benefit us to have three of us going forward with this, but we'll probably be actually have an opportunity with our next episode to do more of a Comic-Con recap versus uh, where we've kind of done a, a very early quasi preview here. All right, guys, let's get into our audio feature figure review. We are going to be talking about Spider-Man from Spider-Man Homecoming MMS 425, a figure that was first revealed slash available for pre-order February 28, 2017, several months before Spider-Man Homecoming hit theaters and... I don't know if a lot of fans, I know myself included, I, I feel like a bad Marvel fan, but that's during that time period, I was kind of on a little bit of a hiatus from Marvel. It was actually the one of the, I think with Doctor Strange, Guardians Volume 2, and then Homecoming, I didn't see in theaters. I kind of shame to admit that, but I can admit it out loud now because I'm amongst friends with all of our listeners. But anyways... Guy, I couldn't track down when it was actually eventually made. I, I thought I saw some YouTube reviews dated to like June 2017. So if that was the case, it had a pretty quick release. But I feel like I remember that this was something that was available kind of towards the tail end of 2017, beginning of 2018 for the most part. And let's just get into this. I mean, this, Chris was a figure that both you and I rated pretty highly with our year-end awards. Mm -hmm. It was rated highly amongst our private Facebook group when we gave everybody the opportunity to contribute their own list. And I want to say it was on the, that list as well, if not in the top five, the top six. And just, I completely love this design. It, was at the time I was like, ah, it's not really a traditional Spider-Man suit, but I mean, Ryan Minderling did a fantastic job designing this. I mean, the fact that the eyes were very practical to, to kind of move them around to, to show what his eyes look like in the comic books. And as a huge Tony Stark slash Iron Man fan, the fact that he had a heavy influence in, in Spider-Man, oh, just it's just it's just great so let's get right into this figure chris yeah so this figure it's funny because like this was one of the first figures that i 
pre-ordered or I, I ordered when I first started collecting, gosh, it was February of last year. I ordered this guy and it wasn't that long after that it went um, on wait list. And a lot of people, I know a lot of people were upset that they missed out on it. And I think the fact that, you know, we've got the uh, movie promo edition coming for far from home. I think that's a great uh, alternative uh, for this figure. But anyway, so we're talking about MMS 425. I've got MMS 426, the deluxe. Same figure, everything. It's just got a couple extra accessories. We'll we'll get into that in a minute. But uh, this figure has got, it's all new body likeness. The design of the suit was all new uh, fabric new technology for this type of figure comes with a, a great Tom Holland head sculpt, a, a non battle damaged one, uh, unlike the, the homemade suit one. And so we get, you mentioned the eyes, he's got different eyes, four different pairs of them, 30 points of articulation. I mean, this figure can get in all kinds of different crazy poses and he is a little bit shorter so it does go very well uh, compared to some of the bigger figures uh, in the Avengers lineup. But uh, yeah, all sorts of accessories with this guy. We've got fists. We've got relaxed hands. We've got palm, you know, as if he's shooting his, his webs. We've got open hands. So you, you've just got a lot of opportunity to come up with all sorts of designs display designs and that sort of thing. I mean, you, you mentioned the material. I think if we contrast this to the Iron Spider mm -hmm. that we've previously reviewed, I mean, that suit was more of a rubberized and obviously causes a lot more creases. I know Allison has mentioned before, like this material is kind of a, a combination of spandex. I think she called it Spandora. Mm -hmm. So the red material has some give. The The blue suit is more, a little bit more rubberized. It I haven't, I, I can say that I haven't really tried to dynamically pose him all that much. I'm a little scared too. I, I have a tendency not to do that with some of the suits like this, just because long-term wise, I just don't want to damage it. And I'm okay with like museum-like poses for the most part. But I just, I keep taking a look over here. And it, like you mentioned, it, like, I, I love the fact that they actually, he looks like a teenager. I mean, he looks, he looks like Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. I mean, TC, you mentioned a couple of the things that I've got a little minor gripes on. Uh, you mentioned it when we talked about the upgraded suit was the, uh, the, the head stitch kind of comes right down the forehead and I know some people got their versions and it was a little bit more pronounced than others. And you mentioned it too with the, the the ankle rocker joint, the fact that there's a little bit of a gap there. And because that Spandora material has a tendency to kind of contract a little bit, the, the ankles look a little weird. And it, it's really hard to not make it look like you get that indentation there. I, I keep trying to fix mine. I'm a little scared to like unstitch the suit at any point just to put a little putty or something in there to fill in that gap. But then if you do that, you can't really articulate it if you ever want to. So it's definitely an opportunity. Hopefully they can fix going forward. Yeah, it's, that's a tough one because you don't want to, you obviously don't want to mess with the suit and it's not, it's really not avoidable to get that, that scrunching near the ankles. I just don't think they accounted for it. You know, it's not something that, they may have paid attention to because they don't they don't always look, I guess, at the the long term changes a suit can have, but I'm glad that they addressed it in the Far From Home movie promo. Uh, I don't think it deters from the quality of the figure. It's still a great figure. And uh I don't own the figure, so you and Chris are gonna have to continue on uh describing it uh, without me, but it, it looks great and uh but yeah, just something something to look out for. Just just be careful if you own the suit not to constantly shift the feet up and down uh scrunch the suit too much or it could who knows it could tear i don't know chris i know this one came jam-packed with accessories especially on the deluxe one i know the deluxe came with like a hoodie 
a yellow blazer, the vulture helmet, even the standard version that I had, you know, I had a backpack, headphones, a textbook, all things that I don't think any of our listeners would be surprised to hear. And I mentioned it well back, probably 10 episodes ago or whatever it was when we were talking about parting out figures. And they actually went for, you know, a decent amount of money, you know, at the time. I don't think I would ever display the character with those things anyways, but it is good to have like little options. And if you are one that likes to kind of kit bash things together, having those extra fig extra accessories. I know Chris, you have just been working recently on your Peter Parker kit bash and having some of those things actually can enhance a, another figure like that. Yeah. The accessories really, did uh make that that kit bash pop with his uh well i mean i used the backpack the uh, headphones the textbook with the uh, gang hood infinity war kit and then obviously with the head sculpt from this figure it i mean it's just a great alternative i, I know a lot of our listeners and and uh fellow members of the group have that kit but uh no i mean that's that's what that's what's great about some of these figures they just you, you you love when you have the option to display with uh something different and then like you do i mean you you were able to recoup some of that investment and put that money towards something else because we all know that six scale collectors love accessories and <laughs> there's always a market for a lot of this stuff Anyway, I mean, the figure comes with other things. He's got his uh, magnetic web wings that he uses when he's in D.C. saving his his friends. And like you mentioned before, the the deluxe has that the zip up hoodie, his um, blazer. So it's just a cool look. And then obviously the deluxe comes with the um, that cool vulture helmet. That's that's the one little homage to that figure at least i've got that so yeah he's got a, a non-wearable mask which is kind of cool and then uh just a bunch of web effects uh different different lengths and that, and that sort of thing but you know like a lot of good stuff there too i think like articulation wise it's pretty good i think this has got a lot more of like some of those racket uh the ratchet joints mm-hmm I, again, I, I'm just a little hesitant to really stretch it out all that far. I know, Chris, I kind of hear you uh, turning the <laughs> turning the figure right now. Sound effects. I mean, oh, yeah, that's that's a, right. Episode 25, the first time we've had sound effects on the show. <laughs> I don't even uh, have a dump button or anything. for. Uh, uh, but I, I'll just say, I think one thing, uh, you know, going back to what TC had said, too, with, um, you know, just trying to not have the ankles bunching up too, as I would recommend too, is if you do bend the elbows, bend the knee, bend, I, I believe the abs can kind of crunch in a little bit. If you do that, make sure you kind of pre-pull the, the material away from the suit so it doesn't get caught underneath. You definitely, I would also say too, I would also say that because of the material that's used, if it's really, it would probably be really easy to get part of the suit material caught on like, you know, if you've got like a hangnail or something on your hands, they really a pull on that. Usually when I handle mine, I grab a pair of like white cotton gloves just because I don't want to damage the suit. I mean, that's how careful I, I treat with my figures. So I, I know for some others, I, I don't think it'll be, you know, that big of a deal, but it's also cloth. The red's cloth, right? Yeah. So yeah. you gotta be careful. You have to real, you know, don't have oil on your hands or do anything stupid. Make sure you wash your yeah. hands and touch oh, the yeah. figure. You- you definitely, yeah, I made sure I washed my hands before <laughs> before I was touching the figure and everything. And I know, I think back when this figure first started popping up, people started getting them. I think a few people did get the, uh, the cloth material snagged. Uh, so again, I'll just reiterate, you got to be careful with, with that. And some of these figures, you just don't, because there's no real way to repair that. It's just... It is what it is, you know, and uh, you don't want to ruin such a nice figure uh, for something so silly. All right, but, Chris, let's yeah. let's uh, let's review it. I know TC, you won't be able to review because you don't got it in hand, but we'll let you 
as the newly minted co-host of the podcast, we'll let you come up with the criteria that Chris and I will use. Oh gosh. Um, (laughs) I'm going to go science books, science books. All right. Science, science textbooks, Chris, on a scale (laughs) of one to five, what, how many science textbooks is this Spider-Man homecoming figure? Well, I definitely don't want to read those science textbooks. Mm. I will, I'll give this guy, I know we've been pretty positive with some of these figures. And again, these are our figures. We decided to get these. We didn't buy them just to review. So we kind of lean towards the positive with a lot of stuff. And they're good. They they are, they are good. We make, we make the best decisions. Uh, Right. Exactly. (laughs) I mean, I'm, I'm up there. I with especially with the deluxe and being able to use some of those accessories um for another figure. I'm right at 4.75. I think the minuses are the ankles and then that stitch on the head. Um uh, mine is not very pronounced, but I know some of them were pretty bad. But yeah, I'm at 4.75. Where are you at, Brian? I'm at four and a half. And I probably actually would rate it a little bit lower than I did probably th- towards the ten- tail end of the year. And it's not because the figure, I, because this being a retro review, we also have the benefit of, of hindsight. I think, sure. I think looking at what Spider-Man figures are coming down the line, I think seeing what, especially what some of the PS4 figures are and the way that they can do the materials and stuff. I mean, we're, we're kind of beating the dead horse here when we're talking about you know, Spider-Man as Hot Toys' new Iron Man, I think that's just a foregone conclusion at this point. I think what they did with the Iron Man figures, especially if you look back to the first Mark III die cast versus what they've been able to do with the Mark L, and you see the the engineering that has improved over time, the the look, the aesthetics and everything, I, I strongly think in time that the Spider-Man figures will also have the improvement and obviously Spider-Man is not die cast. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about better technology with the suit materials and and whatnot. So I think for me, just the shortcomings are the, you know, the ankles are just, they're sometimes really unsightly for me, kind of that, the, the thread and the head sculpt with his, with his mask. I think knowing that we've got this as a reissue on the way, that's where I'm, and still four and a half. I mean, that's still, I'm not upset I have this in my collection. I mean, I love Spider-Man. He's a, he's a focus collection of mine. But I think if I did not have a spider let me put it this way. If I did not have a Spider-Man yet, and I had to pick one out of all the ones that are coming up, I think I'm probably picking the upgraded suit. I agree. Yeah. Or maybe the... Uh movie promo version correct some of the errors that's true too from the true, original true. release and that's a, and a lot more cost effective although that one's currently on wait list so right yeah we'll see well i i look forward to some comparison reviews uh between this figure and the movie promo so i think you know that'll give us some perspective where exactly they did improve you know the final product yeah and like you said brian but right before we go um you know, Hot Toys with Iron Man, they just have had more attempts. Like, it, it, it was not always the Mark 50 or the Mark 4. At one point, you know, the Mark 42 was produced and it was a good figure, but they've gotten a lot better. And I think they're going to do the same with Spider Man. It may not be as drastic of a change, but I think they're going to improve it as time goes on. And I think it, it's just going to get better. Well said, everybody. So, guys, oh boy, we're, we're I'm gonna have a heck of a time editing this, but it's gonna be fun because it's been a great discussion. So, before we get to our final thoughts, we'll go through and do our our normal plug time, telling everybody to check out our website and our YouTube channel. Steve's been doing awesome there. A lot more subscribers. Very happy to have more people on board with a lot of our great content that our whole team is putting out there. We have our Tee Public store. I think we're going to have a sale there towards the tail end of the month of July. So if you like any of our designs, Roy has worked tirelessly to get a lot of those out there. And we get a couple dollars from each T-shirt sale that we put towards our podcast hosting We've got our Facebook page. We're on Instagram. We've got our private group, Six Scale Scavenger Collectors. 
make sure you ask, answer the questions. That's how we know you're a listener, you're a fan of the podcast and YouTube channel, and you want to interact with other like-minded scavengers. We're on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher, and of course on sixscalescavengers.libsyn.com if you want to grab that RSS feed and throw it into your podcast catcher of choice. Whew. All right, guys, Chris, TC, it has been great. TC, super excited to have you as part of the team officially now. I think we've got a good thing going here. And, and Chris, I'm just personally really looking forward to year two and beyond. Oh, man, for sure, for sure. This has been a, a great year. You know, it was about a year and a half ago, you and I had started discussing this whole possibility. And, you know, we're year two looks very promising. We look to continue the growth, continue the conversation and see where things go. And uh, just real quick, just thanks, guys, for having me. Um, I'm glad to be part of the team. Really excited. You guys have a have a great show. And uh, like I said before, let's just keep this thing rolling. Absolutely, TC. All right, Chris, bring us home, my friend. Excelsior. <laughs>